Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FI25 earnings conference call of Indostar Capital Finance Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Viral Sanklecha from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Shlok. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you for the Q1 FI25 earnings conference call of Indostar Capital Finance Limited. To discuss this quarter perform performance, we have from the management, Mr. Kartik and Srinivasan, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Randeer Singh, Executive Vice Chairman, Mr. Vinod Kumar Panigar, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Srijit Menon, CEO of Indostar Home Finance Private Limited, and Mr. Pushkar Joshi, CFO, Indostar Home Finance Private Limited. Before we proceed with this call, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. For more details, kindly refer to the investor presentation and other findings that can be found on the company's website. Without further ado, I would like to hand over the call to the management for their opening remarks. And then we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you and over to you, Karthik, sir. Thank you, Viral. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Karthik in Srinivasan, and I want to extend a warm welcome to each of you for joining our Q1 FI25 earnings call to discuss the financial performance of Industar Capital. I hope you all had a chance to review our financial results and investor presentation, which are accessible on these stock exchanges and our website. I truly appreciate part of our journey. Today, we have with us Ranveer Singh, the whole time director and executive vice chairman, uh, Vinod Panikar, our CFO, Srijit Menon, our uh, CEO of Indostar Home Finance, and Pushkar Joshi, CFO of Indostar Home Finance. Let me start with introducing Mr. Ranveer Singh, who has joined us in July 24. He's a seasoned financial leader with 29 years of experience. In his last assignment, he was joint CEO and co-founder at APAC Financial Services Private Limited and has held numerous operational and strategic financial roles in the financial services industry across various banks and financial institutions. We as management team look forward to work together to continue executing our strategy and building uh, the business to its full potential at end of start. Uh, let me start by discussing the macroeconomic factors this quarter. The IMF has increased the India's growth forecast for 24-25 to 7% from 6.8 as of April 24. The increase was due to the improvement in private consumption, particularly in rural areas. Additionally, government also used India's retail inflation data, which revealed an increase to 5.08 from a 12-month low of 4.75 in May. The RBA has kept the repo rate unchanged at 6.55% for eight consecutive meetings highlighting its focus on balancing inflation control with economic growth stability. Uh, the GST collections have shown significant improvement, reflecting the strong economic performance we are witnessing. In June 24, the total GST revenue reached an impressive 1,73,000 crores. This represents a substantial 7.63% increase over uh, June 23. Discussing about the CV industry, over the past years, especially 22 and 23, the CV industry saw a good growth both in volume and tonnage terms, uh, greatly expanding our foundation. This growth was driven by infrastructure development, increasing mining activities and replacement demand. As we look forward, the replacement demand is expected to be strong, primarily driven by aging fleet, the implementation of the uh, scrappage policy, and this is likely to support the new IP growth. But the current year, we feel like, in spite of the good monsoons, the MNSCD as well as the light and ICD industry is likely to have a lower single digit growth in terms from last year. Uh, that's more uh, because the interest rate has remained high in the new vehicle segment, and uh, the cost of the new vehicles has been going up. With the driver cabin changes come, going to come in next year by March, the price of the asset is still likely to go up. Uh, with the asset cost going up, it has become unaffordable for the retail and FTU players uh, to get into the new vehicle segment, and that is what is aiding the used commercial vehicle industry. 
the pre-owned vehicle industry is likely to continue its strong momentum. Uh, two, three things are contributing to this. First and foremost, there is a scarcity of the old vehicles availability. Combined with the continuous price hike in the new vehicle segment, plus lack of availability of finance for retail FTU operators is driving this. Over the past two years, if you see the used commercial vehicle industry has surged by more than 30% due to limited supply. <coughs> this scarcity originates also from the COVID years because between 20 and 22, the amount of sale of new vehicle has been quite low because that were the years when we moved to BS4 and the industry was badly impacted by COVID. All these are contributing to the growth in the used commercial vehicle industry and in our view, the market is likely to remain stable and grow from here. Uh, also, with FASTAG, the renewal of Octroy and Checkpost, the GST implementation, the lifespan of the vehicles has gone up. Also, the scrappage policy over hand is also pushing the customers to replace. So this is likely to remain a key driver for us and this will help us build a strong portfolio. We are committed to our goal of exploring new products, strategies to boost returns and diversifying our offerings to uh, the retail and FTU operators and we will continue with this. We plan to launch ancillary products around the trucking industry so that the complete benefit of Indostar can get translated to our customers. Uh, we have been consistently uh, trying to improve the well-being of our customers, providing top-class service and adding value to our stakeholders. We will continue to work on this and include uh, ex expanding our lending operations, which, is, which will be aided by the growth in the used commercial vehicle industry. Uh, we remain to committed to enhancing our analytics to ensure our model is flexible and capable of growth. Recognizing the increasing importance of technology, we have made significant investments in the technological area. Our end-to-end -end loan origination is today driven by technology. Additionally, we are expanding our operations, particularly in the Tier 3, Tier 4 uh, cities, with an emphasis on the used commercial vehicle segment. Because we feel with the rural demand kicking up due to good monsoon, it is the place to be in so that the growth can get sustained. Now let me give you an update on our company's operational performance. Our disbursement for Q1 FY25 reached 16, uh, 1627 crore, showing a growth of 45.8% over the previous year. We have actively pursued our goal to reduce the NPA through the implementation of aggression, aggressive collection tactics superior credit appraisal and stringent control measures, and we have been able to successfully reduce delinquencies quarter on quarter. Currently, our GNP stands at 4.19 on a consolidated basis and 4.97% for the standalone entity. Looking at our new SME products tailored to small ticket sizes, particularly targeted at Tier 3, Tier 4 market is getting launched. This strategic shift not only aligns us with market demand, but also reflects our dedication to expanding our footprint and supporting entrepreneurship in undeserved regions. Now I'll hand over the call to Mr. Vinod Panikar to present the financial performance. Uh, thank you, Karthikin, and thank you, and uh, everyone else who's on the call. Along with Karthik, I would also like to uh, welcome Randeep, uh, who is the first time uh, on our call. Uh, and uh, his presence over a period over the next few months and quarters will definitely help us go go forward and boost the performance of the organization. I'm grateful for your presence at this uh, conference call today. Let me give you an overview of the company's financial performance for the first quarter of uh, FY25. Starting with the consolidated revenue, uh, with the consolidated revenue, we generated a total revenue of about 389.6 crores. Uh, as against uh, 299 crores in the same quarter last year uh, and about 474 crores uh, for the immediately preceding quarter. Our net interest income uh, was uh, 186 crores, marking an increase of close to 29% on a year-on-year -year basis. Our net margin stood at about 6%. We are pleased to highlight a significant improvement in our yields. 
with a strong focus on tire three, tire four, and secured lower ticket products, which we call it as focus four. Our uh, operating expenses totaled to about 139 crores in the current quarter, as against about 115 crores uh, in the same quarter last year, and about 139 crores in the immediately preceding quarter. Our profit per quarter stood at about 25 crores. Our standalone revenue for the quarter uh, stood at uh, uh, 304 crores as compared to 241 crores in the same quarter last year and 390 crores uh, in the immediately preceding quarter. But in the immediately preceding quarter, we had a non-recurring uh, one-time income of about 116 crores. Com if that is uh, actually taken away, the growth was, uh, I would say, reasonably good. Uh, our net interest income to get about 137 crores as compared to 108 crores in the same time last year, and uh, including the one-off income of 116 crores or 228 crores, which again says that the net interest income has gone up uh, in the current quarter. Our operating expenses of Q, uh, the quarter was at 112 crores uh, compared to about 92 crores in the same quarter last year, and. Uh, significantly higher 122 crores in the immediately preceding quarter. Uh, at a consolidated level, the disbursements for the quarter, like Kapikin mentioned, was at about 1,627 crores, as against a one, uh, triple one six crores, marking a 46% increase. And we were at about 1,767 crores in the immediately preceding quarter. On a standalone basis, the disbursement, uh, mainly the vital finance uh, disbursement, was at about 1,416 crores as compared to 926 crores um, of the same quarter last year and 1,465 crores in the immediately preceding quarter. On a consolidated basis, our AEM uh, crossed the 9,500 crore mark. We were at about 9,565 crores as against the 8,062 crores that we were uh, at about a year back. In March, we were at about 8,763 crores which uh, shows that uh, the growth was uh, close to 11% in the current quarter, over the immediately preceding quarter. AUM on a standalone basis took the 7170 crores as compared to 6321 crores, marking a 13% increase. We achieved a total collection of 743 crores in the current quarter uh, as against the 676 crores. Um, our collection efficiency, including the overdue, uh, was at about 95%, uh, showcasing our commitment to higher credit standards and higher uh, operational efficiencies. Our primary focus continues to be an asset quality, and we are pleased to report that uh, the efforts that have been put up by the team have led to the stage three being at the same quarter, uh, same uh, at the same level that we were at the same uh, the immediately preceding quarter and significantly lower than the same quarter last year. This is, uh, reflects a healthy loan portfolio moving forward. We are con committed to continue uh, continuing this uh, positive trend and further reducing these in the coming quarter. Further, our stage three has also uh, at about 2.36% uh, uh, seen a reduction over the same figure uh, that was there about a year back when it was 3.7%, uh, which is, but it is slightly higher than the immediately preceding quarter when it was at about 2.1%. The ongoing improvement shows our effective collect credit risk management, a robust collection mechanism, and dedication to maintaining strong asset quality. We have a capital adequacy uh, in the st standard on entity of about 27.7% and a debt equity of uh, around 2%, which gives enough headroom for future growth. And we are confident that this will help us drive profitable growth in the coming quarters and years. The more we leverage, the more we will be able to improve our ROE going forward. In the vehicle finance segment, our AEM uh, at the end of first quarter stood at uh, about uh, 6323 crores. Uh, and uh, as previously mentioned, our emphasis continues to be on growing the used uh, CD segment. And we have seen significant growth in the AEM, which we expect to continue. 
our emphasis on focus course, something which I mentioned sometimes that uh, for focus course product has led to an increased uh, increase in our yield by about 70 bits in the over the last three quarters. Besides the insurance income that we have started generating from the previous quarter, have ensured that uh, our overall income start going up and our mint will keep on expanding as we go forward. Our emphasis on the coming quarter is to source funds from the banking channels in a big way while we uh, continue to uh, repay the existing NCE loans which we have taken since December 22 when we started uh, to kickstart the business, when we needed to kickstart the business engine. A large chunk of these entities get repaid over the next three quarters and which will be, we are confident, be replaced by lower cost funds that we are currently accessing. I need to mention here that uh, during uh, Q4 FY24, we raised funds at about 12.7% uh, and over the last three quarters, incrementally, the funds are being raised at uh, around or even below 10.5%. This trend we are hopeful of continuing as the business stabilizes and is seen by the lenders as well. These two together will ensure that the net interest income improves substantially and with the OPEX stabilizing, we expect to improve our profitability in the next few quarters. Now I would invite my colleague Srijit Menon to provide further insight into the housing finance business, which is another key area, a focus area of our business. Over to you, Srijit. Thank you, Vinod. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start by taking you through the key highlights that illustrate our accomplishments during the quarter ended June 30, 2024. We continued the growth momentum carrying on from the Q4 of last financial year to clock our highest ever first quarter disbursement numbers. This is the first time we've crossed INR 200 crores in the first quarter of the year. We are delighted to report that we witnessed strong momentum across most of our business matrices. During the quarter one, the total disbursement stood at 211 crores. Our assets under management reached 2,395 crores representing a robust growth of 37.6% year-on-year basis. Our loan book stood at 1,908 crores. Our customer base now stands at more than 30,000 customers depicting the granular nature of our assets with an average ticket size of INR 9 lakhs. Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Maharashtra continue to remain. Our core geography is accounting for almost 85% of our loan portfolio. We continue our journey to enhance operational efficiency and embrace digital transformation. We have now a total branch network of 122 branches across the country as on 30th June and continue, continue to expand radially in the chosen geographies by way of digital locations. Maintaining an excellent asset quality remains the cornerstone of our operations. Our 90 plus days past due portfolio stands at 0.93% and our one plus day pass view stood at 3.95% as on 30th June 2024, which are marginally higher than the previous quarter of 0.83% and 3.02% as on 31st March. Our gross case three assets, uh, the GNPA stood at 1.34% as of June 30, 2024. We continue to enhance our digital infrastructure to provide a seamless experience to our valued customers. From this perspective, we have gone live with the end-to-end -to -end digital and paperless journey in the previous quarter. And I'm extremely happy to inform you that the adoption rate of our sales app is now 100% and more than 40% of our incremental disbursements are going through the automated loan kit. We are working towards strengthening this journey even further with few enhancements being developed in the process, such as the introduction of the login scorecards, the self-tracking of customer journey, and from a distribution side, we're now in the process of launching our own 
digital connector app to onboard connectors in a seamless manner on the liability side we successfully raised inr 165 crores during the quarter majorly through term loans from banks we are pleased to report a strong liquidity position with inr 127 crores in cash on the balance sheet and an additional 295 crore of undrawn sanction now moving on to our financial performance our total income stood at 85 crores with our net interest income at inr 49 crores pre provisioning operate operating profit stood at inr 21 crores profit after tax for the quarter stood at inr 14 crores our return on assets are at 3% and we maintain a strong capital adequacy of 56.2% and a debt to equity of 2.6 times in conclusion our commitment to innovation efficiency and maintaining a high asset quality continues to drive our success looking ahead we remain focused on executing our strategic initiatives to further enhance operational excellence expand our customer base and explore opportunities for growth we are optimistic about the future and remain dedicated to delivering sustained value for our investors and stakeholders i now take this opportunity to hand over the mic uh, to mr ranveer singh uh, for a final remark uh thank thank everyone for joining us all um and settling in nicely after joining the last week monday um as i see i think we are very positive trajectory over last few quarters and i look forward to working with the management team to really achieve you know the best in class operating performance over you know the next you know quarters and and year we look forward to be engaging with all of you you know in the in the future uh we will now hand over the call to the moderator for further course thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Kunal Kodania from DSP Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. This is Vivek Ramakrishnan. I had four questions. I'll just ask them in sequence. One, uh, in a collection efficiencies and GNPs have increased both in the commercial vehicle and the housing finance business. Uh, if you could ex- throw some more into it, I mean, we you know we know it's been a tough. Uh, quarter for heat with heat and elections and so on and do you see any correction happening immediately or will it take a longer period of time so those are the two questions for the asset on on the two sectors then on the liability side uh, i noticed that you know the hfc has been successful in raising bank loans but uh, the nbc is still not uh, uh, you know increase its bank loans and mr panikar uh, referred to progress being made so if you could throw some more color on that lastly in terms of you know since you're going to refocus on sme business is there going to increase cost income or is there any operating leverage you can get from your existing branch network those are my questions thank you yeah see we'll start with the asset question on cv uh, typically april may is a dull quarter in cv because uh, compounded with elections uh, there is always a spike this is not a this year phenomenon it's a annual phenomenon uh but we have been able to maintain uh, ratios i am sure we will be uh, this will get pulled back basis uh, uh post uh, monsoon so typically what happens up to monsoon there is a increase, slight increase in delinquency it starts getting normalized post september and by the end of the year it will go back to normalcy we will see the same phenomenon there uh the second question i'll take is on the uh, sme portion of it Uh, we are leveraging our existing branches so we don't expect any increase in the cost to income beyond whatever is there uh, 
the asset portion of uh, mortgage uh, stages is taking. Yeah, so I think if you look at a pure 90 plus safe pass due, the increase is about 10 bits, and that's something that's expected in the first quarter. And as you rightly pointed out, some of the expenses that come up in the first quarter do lead to some of that. But uh, as we see happening across the second and third quarter, we start the moderation and the real moderation then towards the end of the last quarter. Yeah, uh, maybe just to add to, uh, just to add to what Karthik said, na? on the SME, there will be some amount of increase, uh, but then that would be in relation to the increase in the man manpower. Everything else would be through the existing bank. I ju just uh, the adding that as a clarification number. Uh, then on the second point, you had asked about the fundraising, and I mentioned about uh, the fundraising which is there. <clears throat> we have raised about 730 crores in the current quarter. Uh, our, most of it actually uh, came from the bank, maybe in uh, one form or the other. Uh, so some was in the form of a term loan, uh, which was a uh, public sector bank. There were two funds which came from uh, the private sector bank in the form of WCDL, long-term WCDL. One was a large PTC, which we did with, did with one of the... Uh, with a large private sector bank, and there was some amount of CPs that we did. Uh, there are many, uh, I would say, things which are there in the pipeline uh, in terms of uh, bank uh, sanctions, uh, which uh, would justify in the month of uh, August uh, and uh, in the month of September. So we are confident that uh, we will possibly uh, come back, uh, when we come back the next time, we'll come with the a, number, a substantially higher co collection, I mean, a sourcing of funds from uh, banks, more specifically banks, while we are continuing to do other things. In fact, uh, uh, when we are talking about raising of funds, I just need to make this mention of the public issue of the NCDs that we are working on. We have filed a uh, prospectus on the 29th with uh, the stock exchanges, and uh, we are awaiting response from the places which uh, we are looking at raising 150 plus 150 uh, in terms of uh, by way of the public uh, issue of NCD. We are confident that these things, uh, a combination of all the sources will help us uh, get funds at a substantially lower rate. Uh, Ramai also mentioned that uh, over the last three quarters, the incremental cost of funds have been falling and it has been at a uh, average of about ten and a half percent from a down from a twelve point seven percent that it was in the second quarter of last year. So we are seeing funds coming from various corpus, various sources, and that will drive our uh, volume. There is a large, uh, uh, I would say, sanction from a PSU bank, which is in the final documentation uh, documentation stage. That should also be taken by us in the next eight to ten days. So thank you very much, and wish you all good luck. Thank you. Before we take the next question, participants who wish to ask a question, you may press star and one. <coughs> Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sunidhi Joshi, which is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so in the CV finance, the presentation depicts a drop in ATS after multiple quarters of ATS above 8 lakhs. So any secular change in disbursement policy that is being implemented? Yeah, see, we, uh, we were uh, doing m and to a large extent. What we have now done is we are focusing completely towards small commercial vehicles, pickup. Uh, this uh, comes at an average ticket size of 4 lakhs. In terms of units, almost 60% of the units are coming through small, these small ticket sizes that has pulled down our ATS. The for, uh, concept behind this, the thought behind this is uh, because it's a large consumption driven economy. We are a large consumption driven economy. These products help in making the consumption driven economy grow further. The rural market is also seeing an uptick, so our focus has completely changed towards pickups and small commercial vehicles. Hello. Yeah. So, Sunivi, I had made a mention when I did, uh, in my speech about the focus force. This is the focus force which Karthikan is talking about, which uh, is uh, smaller in ticket size, which is higher in yield, and therefore it is helping us in an overall business. Thank you. Uh, 
हेलो मिस सुनिधि डज दैट आंसर योर क्वेश्चन हेलो या सुनिधि ऑन द हाउसिंग फाइनेंस साइड आर जी एन पी एंड एन एन पी ए मेट्रिक्स आर इन स्टप एंड नाउ हायर देन एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री मेट्रिक्स आफ्टर इयर्स ऑफ डाउनवर्ड ट्रेंड सो एनी स्ट्रेस बिल्डअप यूर इन दिस सेगमेंट नो सो एज आई मैं इन माई आंसर टू दर्ल क्वेश्चन वी जी एन पी ए फॉर द फर्स्ट क्वार्टर टिपिकली फॉर कंपनीज आर स्लाइटली हायर एंड देन दे स्टार्ट इंचिंग डाउन टूअर्स द सेकेंड एंड थर्ड क्वार्टर इन आर केस on 90 dpd plus the gnp has increased only by 10 bits uh, so 0.83 has gone up to 0.93% and we are fairly confident that that will moderate as we move towards the uh, future quarters okay and just to quick follow up on it uh, is how do you foresee the asset quality matrix to evolve as you scale your introduced sm so Uh, see, we feel like our asset, uh, the uh, GNP overall numbers will uh, remain stable or will go down. Because in the market I am operating, we are expecting a 5% GNP and 2 to 2 to 2.5 percent net NPA. We'll remain in that territory. We will not have any surprises. The new SME book performance will be known probably next year, but it will be uh, aping whatever is uh, there in the market. So it will be a low NPA product. Okay, fine. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ahan Tulshan from Trivantage Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. You may go ahead with your question. Yes, I had a couple of questions. Uh, I just wanted to know what the trajectory of the credit costs will be in the coming quarters, the ECL provisions and the write-offs. and uh, i wanted to know the what would be the sh- uh, if there is a, a targeted share of housing finance in the consolidated aum mix uh, because this quarter the disbursements uh, relative to cd disbursements the housing disbursements are much lower so i wanted to know if there is a targeted share uh, we'll take that uh, credit cost to simple see uh, the segment i am in Uh, we can expect a one and a half to two percent credit cost. We will remain in that territory only. Uh, we feel like uh, we have some amount of old book, uh, which is around two hundred and eleven crore, which we have mentioned uh, over the period of next two years. So till that time, some amount of here there can come in. But the segment I am in, we expect a credit cost of around one and a half percent on the long term. That's how we will end up at. Yeah, on the second question, I think the uh, way we look at our overall target for the year, and uh, we've seen the budgets both for housing and CV. Uh, as you know, housing uh, moderates in the first quarter and picks up towards quarter two and three. So we're fairly confident that both the budgets will be met and the ratios will be what it is as we uh, planned out for the year. Okay, so the current uh, mix will be maintained for the year. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devansh from Safe Enterprises. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. So thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, with respect to cost of borrowing, uh, can you elaborate when when the benefits start flowing in? Um, also, I mean. Um, This quarter, there has been an inch up, right, in cost of borrowing uh, in comparison to last quarter, and we expected significant benefits flowing in from this quarter. Uh, so, some thoughts if you can uh, share over here. Um, also, credit cost. Uh, can you break that up uh, between uh, uh, housing finance and X of housing finance? How that is shaped up? So, uh, I think the first question, uh, Devans. Uh, the uh, Cost of funds have actually started coming down. If you see uh, Q3 FY24, we were at about 11.9% on an overall basis. Today, uh, the, on an overall basis, we are at about 10.8%. That is on the overall. On the incremental, uh, like I said uh, during my initial uh, uh, speech, from uh, a Q2 FY24.
my incremental cost of borrowing was 12.7 percent. We have now come to uh, close to 10 and a half percent, or just below 10 and a half percent in the current quarters. We uh, are conf uh, confident that going forward, uh, this trend should continue. Uh, see, I also made a mention about the NCDs uh, that we had borrowed uh, between December 22, and let me put it uh, maybe up to the December 23. Uh, lot of it uh, gets paid over the next three to five quarters. Lot of it in the next three quarters. That is uh, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Uh, those were taken at higher rates. That will, uh, and that is getting replaced by uh, these funds, which are now at about, uh, I, I, I would say, ten and a half percent or maybe lower. So once that actually reaches that, those kind of that kind of replacement is happening, the cost of funds, the trajectory trajectory will be downward. Uh, it would be uh, for me to possibly get the benefit of a double A minus. I would be possibly two three quarters away. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So credit costs in the housing side have been consistent at 0.4 percent over the previous quarters, and so there is no reason to believe that that will change. 75, 25 is the credit cost. 75, 25. 75 percent is from the parent, and 25 percent from the housing company. Okay. Uh, and our guidance in terms of uh, AUM for this year, next year. Uh, and also the ROE metric you are looking for, and within that uh, guidance for uh, cost of borrowing as well as credit cost uh, for FY25 and FY26. See, uh, like I said, uh, on the AUM, I think we have said that earlier also, we are looking at uh, uh, close to uh, 9,500 uh, crores in the standalone and above 12,500 crores is uh, the AUM that we are looking at. Uh, when we talk about the cost of funds, uh, I said that we are at about 10.8 on an overall basis in the current quarter. We should possibly uh, go down by about 10, 15, uh, 10 bits a quarter uh, and go to a figure. So uh, let us say around 10.5 in the fourth quarter. That's the way I would look at it. Uh, on the uh, ROE, I would say that uh, we would possibly be able to give more guidance as we go into the, uh, possibly at the end of the next quarter, huh? because we are uh, uh, working on certain things and we would want to see that happen before we give any guidance on the ROE. Okay. Um, okay, fine. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Tebrewal from Otela Losal. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so the first question that I had was on uh, vehicle finance. Um, a little bit earlier, you had said that we have now uh, started focusing on pickups and uh, small commercial vehicles. So just wanted to clarify, uh, has the focus completely shifted to uh, SUVs and pickups or I mean, is it still going to be a, a good mix between MNHCVs and SCVs going ahead? Um, Abhijit, I think we explained this during the last call also. Somewhere, uh, ICVs are getting replaced by single axle trucks because the viability of the single axle trucks has significantly improved with the tonnage changes that have happened. And the, uh, they are coming and hitting the resale market. So some amount of single axle trucks, particularly in tier three locations, there is a lot of uh, market that has grown. We would not want to miss those opportunities because if uh, ICV versus uh, uh, single axle truck, I would really any time prefer a single axle truck because they are more stable. Uh, there is no discounting there. So the price of the used vehicle market doesn't drop there. So some amount of m and will remain because India moves in m and Got it. Um, so the second question I had was on the SME business. Um, I think during the opening remarks, uh, we spoke about uh, starting this new SME product targeted at tier three and tier four markets. So if you could just explain um, what what product are we exactly targeting in SME, uh, ticket sizes, yields, um, how are we kind of building 
this product uh, and is it going to be a core product for us going forward because what i see in our press release now we started calling out uh, vehicle uh, and and housing as our core aum and core disbursements uh, uh this uh, product we just launched it is a 3 to 7 lakh uh, uh micro uh, loan against property product we have started piloting in tamil nadu which is one of the largest markets uh it will be predominantly towards business people who want loan to run their working capital that's the product which we are targeting uh it will be see cv will remain the vehicle will remain the core business of the company this product will be an ancillary product for uh, at least next two years uh we are targeting a yield of uh, beyond 20% in this product got sir and the last question that i had was on um, basically predictability today i mean uh, if we look at our pnl right i mean while the business momentum has been very very good and congratulations to you for that there is still much to be desired in terms of predictability of the pnl so whether it is um, credit costs uh, the non interest income components so when can we start seeing more predictability in our earnings profile uh abhi ji i think i will uh, respond to that see uh, i will split it in two parts one means the revenue part i will talk about the expenses separately on the revenue the predictability has come in see there was a one off in the immediately preceding quarter but then now we are talking about uh, the same thing which will go forward and the growth will happen this is uh, a combination of uh, uh, interest income the other re- revenues which are there and also the insurance uh, uh, income that we would be uh, we have started getting from the preceding quarter so the way once the business uh, grows and because of the kinds of uh, funds that we are uh, uh, now getting we are confident that the growth will be there so and that's the reason we are saying that uh, it the cv business by itself would have a roughly 9500 uh, i mean the stand alone business will have a uh, book of about 9500 uh, crores and all this will be uh, revenue yielding uh, businesses so the, the, and that will grow on a quarter and quarter basis between the last quarter and this quarter itself the cv uh, interest income so increase of about 30 crores 29 crores to have uh, something to be very precise so that kind of growth you will see on a quarter on quarter basis i will now talk about the expenses see expenses we had said uh, in the previous calls also that we are in a phase where we are actually growing we are looking at uh, uh, expanding we had said that we intend to have about 80 to 100 branches in the uh, current financial year we have increased it by about 20 uh, 22 or something in the first quarter some bit of the balance will happen in the next three quarters uh, we are ramping up manpower which will be a cost apart from these two uh, and the new business which kapik had mentioned about the sme we don't see any uh, additional cost that will come so we don't see any large expenses or new expenses coming up in the uh, overall operating expenses uh, line item so the credit cost uh, is uh, possibly like as i can mention that uh, sometime back and i think sujit also mentioned that q1 is normally pretty bad because delinquencies uh, go up a little bit only to get corrected over the next three quarters so um, the credit cost will continue to be uh, i would say reasonably steady and uh, the indication of about that one and a half percent kind of ultimate loss which kapik mentioned would definitely be there here i would actually want to point out the uh, at the peak of level if you leave out the one off of the la- versus of the la- and compare it with immediately preceding quarter or the same quarter last year there has been a substantial increase and it's all because of the increased uh, asset uh, book that we have and the increased uh, yield and also the new insurance income which is there so uh, the predictability going forward is there and we are confident that uh, we will be able to deliver increased revenue and uh, i would say uh, reasonable amount of uh, uh, opex and therefore uh, better profitability 
got it uh, you know, so just one follow up on that um, i think i i heard during the call that there is a legacy book of almost 211 crores uh, which will get resolved over the next two years other than that um, any portfolio um, either in the cop yes it will corporate book vehicle or any book where you are contemplating any other erc transaction or basically portfolio sell out sell downs or all of that is now behind i am not any predicting anything but two of my corporate companies have come and asked me for uh, want to, telling me that they want to move out of me so if any of these guys move out of me then i will not run a corporate book for a single customer uh, that's the call we will take at that point of time because two people one of the large guys has come and told me that he has lot of money he wants to foreclose So if he forecloses, the other guy wants to beat him out to some other NBFC. For one loan, we will not continue. At that point of time, we will take a call as to what is to be done. Uh, apart from this, we don't see any other uh, thing coming and impacting us. Even on the 211 crores, which Karthik had mentioned above, that is substantially provided for, and uh, we carry close to 60 percent of provisioning on that. And the settlement that we are doing is at a uh, Rate which is substantially higher than the provision. Uh, provision. So we are confident that there will not be any major challenge. What is up? This is very useful. Uh, thank you, and all the very best to you in your team. Thanks, Abhi. Thank you. Thanks for your support as usual. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Saptarshi Chatterji from Grow AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on good growth. Uh, my question pertains to the employee growth that I'm seeing around in the CV business around 500 employee addition. There is only 20 branch addition in this quarter. And there is a sharp increase in the employee strength. Can you please highlight which verticals and why are you adding the employees? I was expecting that. year onwards employee productivity would increase that the employee productivity is at around 40 lakhs which is one of the highest in the industry so we are dealing only with retail fpu profile which are predominantly uh, in tier 3 tier 4 market so uh, the distance uh, see what we have done is we have categorized the branches based on their potential and based on the potential we have given manpower uh we feel like uh, this is the correct kind of number which we are having and the productivity which i have mentioned is one of the best in the industry also the increase of the core it to our employees na no? roughly 60 of them are for the sme business which karthik and said that we are we have just started and we will be rolling out over the next uh, i would say uh, couple of months uh, we have just done a pilot in tamil nadu and we would be rolling it out so that that is the reason why the number looks uh, your uh, your feeling is that no the number of branches have not come in but uh, the number of employees are there got it sir can you please highlight what is the outlook for total branch addition as well as employee addition for full year we were at about 391 last year uh in the end of march we were, uh, we are looking at being close to 346470 by the end of the year understood and the second question is uh, on the uh, the cv business again so when we are saying that we will reach around 9500 crore and there what kind of ecl provisioning we want to maintain it would be around this stage 3 55% or you see that there can be better pdl gt then therefore ecl provisioning can be lower for this year see we 50% is something is really we comfortable with we will continue to hold 50% at stage 3 that is the comfortable number in our view understood and Uh, lastly, can you please remind us what is the total? I think we are highlighting, but can you please remind the total uh, SR book for us and total absolute provisioning on that, and any improve, any any updates on that part? See, uh, we were at about 1175 crores uh, of uh, net debt charge at the beginning of the ground uh, at the beginning of the year. 
uh, we have collected about 53 crores against that. So the growth is uh, at about 1122 crores. So we have a provision, net provision of about 357 crores, leaving a total outstanding of about 800, uh, 766 crores on the overall basis. Uh, so these are, uh, I would say, uh, SRs which would get redeemed over a period of time, uh, most of it have happened in the la in the last let's say six to nine months. So most of it will uh, will start uh, I would say get, uh, getting. And the in fact uh, I mentioned about the 53 or 54 crores of cash coming in that has happened against one of the SRs which uh, were issued to us uh, last September August. So against that cash uh, substantial cash has, has come in. A lot more will start uh, will come. But then uh, it is something which would be a two to three year, uh, year kind of journey for the entire thing to get uh, redeemed. Got it. Very helpful. Just one clarification that we are, as of now, generally we are not expecting any revaluation negative impact for, for in next two, three quarters for the SR book, right? See, we created that uh, extra cushion last year, so we don't expect anything to come this year. <coughs> March, we had, March we had, if you remember our March call, we had said that uh, whatever is the gain we got, we have put it as an extra school of provision. So we don't expect anything extra to come. Right, sir. Very helpful, and thank you so much. All the best. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vibha from Fair Connect. Please go ahead. Yeah, my question is on operating efficiency. You said you're operating at uh, best level efficiency at industry level. Could you please elaborate on that? Uh, what does it translate into, you know, number of cases per sales officer or what benchmark are really uh, you talking about? Uh, see, we have two sets of businesses. The m and CD business, there has be a minimum 40 lakh productivity or five units minimum. In the small commercial vehicle, it has to be 8 and 30, uh, 30 lakhs or 8 units. That's the productivity level which we are following, which is one of the best in the industry. Uh, because uh, the, uh, it, I'm talking about conversion, I'm not talking about sourcing. So logins will be much higher because only 50% is the, 62% uh, is my approval ratio. So the number of cases, these are much higher. Okay. So these are disbursements. Eight yes, cases and 40 lakh. What I mentioned is on disbursement. Yeah. Small and MHCV is, um, you know, 40 lakh and five cases. Yeah. M and HCV is 40 lakh or five cases. Small is eight or 30. And uh, this is your, this is the benchmark or this is your average productivity that you're achieving? This is the average productivity we are achieving as of today. This is the benchmark we have today. Almost 70% of my population achieves this benchmark. Okay. And what is your attrition rate at uh, branch level? Uh, see, the overall company level is stable at around 24%. Front end ranges between 35 to 40% depending on uh, the markets. There are few markets where there are aggressive competitors where we are seeing a bit of higher attrition. Uh, particularly in the sales side, collection and credit, we are not seeing any attrition. Okay. So my question is actually, I'm just trying to put the numbers and relate them to profitability. If we are already at best of productivity, and if you are achieving 70% of your staff is achieving this productivity, it is quite commendable uh, by any standard. But that also means that there is no scope to improve the cost to income ratio. Um, because on cost side, you're already uh, doing the best. And if that be the case, then the profitability matrix looks very worrisome because uh, your return on equity is only 0.36%. And to an earlier participant, you said that 1.5% is the credit provision you expect on an ongoing basis after your bad book turns out. And if I see for this quarter, credit provision in relation to the average advantage, is only 1.3%. Uh, so where do you think uh, the profitability improvement, if at all, will come from? 
Vibha, I think uh, I had answered this uh, in a combination of two, three points. I will possibly consolidate it in a single response and give it to you again. Uh, we have mentioned about a change in the strategy wherein we are now talking about moving from an M&H CV to a uh, SCV and uh, the smaller uh, trucks, which are smaller vehicles, which are yielding uh, higher. So over the last uh, three quarters, from uh, Q3 uh, FI24 to Q, uh, Q1 FI25, we are talking about uh, an increase of roughly 70 bits in the yield. So the yields are now going up. The, collect, the disbursement normally happen towards the fag and so the income generation against the disbursement normally come in the next quarter. So a lot of it will start, uh, you'll start seeing it in the current quarter. So that we are talking about is 70 bits. The insurance income that we mentioned about uh, is something which uh, started uh, from the 22nd of February, to be uh, very precise, uh, from the 22nd of February, so some 4. 76 crores of income came from in the preceding quarter and roughly 15 odd crores came in the current quarter. We expect this to continue and this is the disbursement that we do. Uh, get, uh, I would say we will be, and if we are able to sell more policies, we will be able to get uh, higher revenues from that. So uh, the revenue part is something which is uh, going. Now we come to the cost of funds. I also mentioned about the cost of funds uh, being higher than possibly what my peers are at. It's largely because of the uh, reason for me to, for the need that I had about uh, a year and a half back, or maybe slightly more than that, to actually go and uh, get funds uh, through the NCV route. Uh, but the intention was to kickstart the business in this, which we did successfully. And now we talk about, in terms of, we boast about the uh, increase that we are having. The, this is that we have started getting funds from banks and other sources. I also mentioned about the public issue that we are uh, doing and for which we have filed the prospectus a couple of days back on the 29th of June, uh, July. Uh, so uh, those things will actually lead to my cost reduction. Some of it I have actually shown by way of numbers going from the incremental borrowing cost has actually gone from a 12, down from a 12.7% to roughly 10.5%. Uh, so the benefits of that will come in the quarters to come and going forward with the banks opening up for me, I am able to get funds at a lower rate and the NCDs which are which I have taken is something which will get start uh, will start getting repaid from the September quarter. Some 500, uh, 600 crores get repaid in the September quarter, 400, 500 crores get repaid in the December quarter, another 400 gets repaid in the March quarter. So we are talking about the high cost funds going away, getting replaced by uh, lower cost funds. And so then you, if you look at it, uh, it is more like a teaser that one is going down, the other is going up kind of thing. And therefore you will see that uh, benefit of that going to the bottom line. You uh, add comfort on the office, so I'm not getting into that right. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Just uh, MHC, uh, MNCV, what is the yield? And on SCVs that you're doing now, what is the yield? Uh, can you please help me with that? Uh, maybe last quarter discussion. Uh. See, see uh, company-wide, we are average 18.4. MNHCVs are 18.6, sorry. Uh, MNHCVs are in the range of around 17 and a half to 18. Small commercial vehicles are much higher. I don't want to give a number for the small commercial vehicles because this call will be uh, heard by everybody. You can talk to me separately okay. so that I can give you the correct number. Sure, sure. And what is the percentage book between MHCV and uh, SCV and what do you target it to be going forward? Uh, see, m and SCV as of today on terms of uh, you, uh, the units is around 35%, volume is around 45%. We would like m and SCV to be in the range of less than 35%. Okay. Okay. And a second question is on the the investments uh, uh, that you have. Uh, these are all liquid investments, so apart from your investment in HFC subsidiary, or there is uh, something more to that? There are three parts to the investments, uh, Viva. One is the investment in HFC, which is uh, roughly about... Uh, 
453 crore. Second is the investment that we, I mentioned sometime back to a different question on the investment in the SRs that we have, which we, okay. I in a reply to the previous uh, person, uh, for, okay. for the previous uh, investor had mentioned that on uh, what is that uh, as a figure. And third are the liquid ones, which uh, uh, the excess funds are put somewhere so that it is some uh, bit of revenue. Okay, okay. So what would be the quantum on SRs if you could help me with that? Uh, as such, the next figure would be about 766 crores. 766 crores, okay. Okay. Okay, so these uh, HFC, of course, will remain, but the SRs, when they run down, then that will also impact your overall yield uh, favorably. Correct. Uh, it will uh, uh, improve my uh, overall ROA. When we talk about yield, we don't consider SRs. Yes, sir. But so it yes. will improve my ROA. And therefore, my ROE is also. Okay. And what are the other financial assets? This 225.9 crore as on June 24. This is slide number. Uh, slide number 36. Uh, 36. Give me a minute. Huh? You said 26 or 36? 36. 36, and there is other financial assets, 225.9 crore as on June 24. Viva, uh, can we take it offline? Yes, this is not. Uh, so, uh, I can just hold on. Uh, it's okay. uh, some security deposits, uh, some assignment receivable deposit with the uh, trustees for securitization and other receivables of over 40 years. That's the 228 or 226 or crores. Bulk of it is uh, the deposit with trustees for securitization. Okay. 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 So these will be yielding the same as your normal assets, right? No, no. The yes, FDs generally yield lower, no? Yeah, lower than when it's Oh, these are the FDs. Okay. okay. These are FDs for the, the BTC kind of transactions we have Okay. You're carrying a lot of liquidity, actually, in relation to your borrowing. Uh, is it because you're not confident in getting the refinance lines, or what is your policy? No, that is not the. We have the policy of ensuring that uh, uh, we keep at least funds uh, to take care of the next two months of repayment. So, uh, I just now in a different context, I mentioned about September being a uh, month where we have a huge repayment, of, as a lot of entities go out. So that okay. is the reason we keep this kind of funds. Okay. And okay. the business is growing, so funds are required. So we need to ensure that funds are available. While the collection has okay. been very good at about 300 odd crores per month, we need to have uh, funds in and to ensure that uh, the business doesn't uh, wait for the funds and then do the business. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the interest of time, this was the last question for today's conference. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Viral Sanglicha from Orient Capital for closing comments. Thank you. I would like to thank the management for taking the time out for this conference call today and also thanks to all the participants. If you have any query, please feel free to contact us. We are Orient Capital Investor Relations Advisors to Indostar Capital Finance Limited. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Windows Star Capital Finance Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.